second game of the morning. I think they're going to get our, our audio here so we can hear each other here in a little bit. And uh, I want to see if I can get you the lineup. Here going on, those cuatro, seis, ocho, doce. All right, so I think those are the seniors walking in, and we couldn't get a, a roster earlier enough from Lakeside, so we're going we're gonna to spot those numbers. But a great match. You're excited about this match because you know some of these players, and uh, you're very familiar with, uh, with the teams. I do, I do. I am an alumni or an alumnus of Lakeside High School, which the Lady Rams going for their first state championship in program history here today as they take on a very talented Cersei team. It should be a great matchup. Uh, both of these teams fought hard to get to this point. You know, when you look at Cersei, to get here they had to beat the defending state champions for the 5A, and that was Little Rock Christian. They won that match two to nothing last week in the semis. And then for Lakeside, a very hard fought victory. Took it down to penalty kicks where it was Ashley Gale, the senior, who was the hero for the Lady Rams. They won that match four to three against Greenbrier. And really, when it comes to the Gales, success in the state tournament really is a family affair because her brother, Philip Gale, was essential in leading the Rams to their first state championship, the boys team their first state championship in program history back in 2018. So definitely a lot of talent in that Gale family and a lot of talent all over the field here today for both squads. It should be a very fun match. All right, here are your numbers if you're ready. Number 16, number 13, number 18, number 17, number 11. If you want to check them, circle up, and that way we can read it for, for Lakeside. So I'm here I come again, number 16, number 17, number 15 is the beautiful game of soccer, number five. Goalkeeper is number, you can see the goalie here. Here we go, number 25, is another one, number 30, number 19. Number five, I think I already gave you that, number 15 is the beautiful game of soccer number 17 for lakeside the center referee has blown the whistle and here we go with another 40 minutes of soccer and it's cersei versus lakeside cersei wearing black today a unique uniform especially with the weather it's going to be interesting and uh cersei coming up uh strong at the beginning of the game the lineup for cersei Emmett Bailey, Hagan Bob, Brian, Kay Daniel, Mary Daniel, Alisa Day, Gaby Eddings, Scaling Holyfield, Aubrey Meadows, Chandler Meadows, Grace Slage, and Shelby Grab. These are the lineup was sent by the coach via email to us. And uh, we're still working on Lakeside? Yes, the Lakeside Lady Rams here are the starters that we know right now. We've got number five, Amory Gale, the sophomore starting out. And you've also got number 11, Emiliana Kaiser, the senior, joined by fellow senior Taylor Ramirez. We also have Riley Moses, the junior, number 15. Number 16, Allison Irwin, the senior. Another senior as well, number 17, Olivia Turner. And then you have number 25, Ashley Gale, the senior, who we were just talking about a moment ago, the hero in the Green Buyer match last week in the semis. And then you have Annalise McAllister, the junior, rounding up the starting lineup for the Lady Rams. Is the state finals between these teams there have a lot of energy that you can uh, feel and hear the energy with the goalkeeper number 30 on the jersey for Cersei. Shelby Webb sending the ball or punting the ball top of the almost to the middle of the box. Lake sides attacking. Cersei on the goal number five with a shot on goal. Good opportunity. Gabby Eddings.
I took a picture of the roster too. See if I can. Watching NFHS. Place to be for the state finals. And today we have a Lakeside Lady Rams versus the Lady Lions from Cersei. Throwing for Lakeside, number 17, Olivia Turner. Turning into the attacking third as number eight. For Cersei, Avery Meadows. You can see in the background, Fable still enjoying the championship behind the scoreboard clock over there. Celebration is going on. Good crowd for Lakeside on the other side from the press box. Cersei on the go, cross ball. Cersei still fighting for that ball. It's gonna be a throw in. So how far as, as far as distance, how far are these teams apart geographically? Well, this is actually is pretty close to a midpoint between the two teams. Uh, Lakeside, just about 45 minutes to the south, a little bit under an hour from here by car. And then for Cersei, north of here, not too much farther than it is for Lakeside, but a little bit farther trail. Top for the match and opportunity for it. at the goal. You don't get looks much better than that. It was an open shot and she took it perfectly executed and the Lady Lions have the early advantage here in this contest. Lady Lions are waking up early today and saying we're going to go up there. We're going to show our speed and you saw that in the counter attack that started in the left side and then crossed the ball top of the penalty box for a Chandler Meadows to put 1-0. Don't feel down now. It's just the beginning of the game because I know this is the <laughs> challenge when you when you calling games and when there is some emotion and attached to the team that you you're looking because it happens to me. This uh, high school season uh, broadcasting uh, 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 Rogers High School games for my son it was painful. Well, this it's still early on in the contest, and we should have a very fun matchup here today. Uh, Cersei, of course, fighting hard, trying to win that first state championship since 2013. They've got that uh, chip on their shoulder, I guess you could say. Um, this is a team that we know likes to score early on, and they score quite often. In fact, uh, there were reports on Max Preps that there was a game against West Memphis a few weeks ago that they won 18 to nothing. An incredible outing for the Lady Lions. And they've got the early advantage here. They'll look to hold on to that. But again, the Lady Rams, if they can keep this match close, they are known to bring matches down to the wire. And they do play their best when the lights are the brightest in situations such as these. So it should be fun to see where we go from here. Number 19, uh, Kylie Hermosillo in the last attempt for Lakeside. Now there is a corner kick, and it's going to be taken care by Emiliana Kaiser. Corner kick, ball comes in the box, an opportunity with the head and the ball goes away and from here it looks like the throwing is going to go for Lakeside. In charge of the throwing is Olivia Turner. Olivia Turner has the support of number 19, Kylie Hermosillo. Cutting inside. Cersei. Looks like the ball might left the field, but center referee says no, and it's going to be a throw in for Cersei. 
early goal, top of the fourth minute of the first half. And if uh, you just uh, tune in into NFHS, and if you miss the early game, it, it was Fabio who took the crown, beating uh, Benton Midwest 3-0. Counter attack, Cersei on the go. Another opportunity, that was number 10, Mari Daniel. Couldn't get to the ball and it's gonna be a goal kick for Lakeside. Tell from here what number the, the goalkeeper has. Number 24 is the goalkeeper for Lakeside. That would be the senior Taylor Bledsoe. And now with the speed, Cersei getting behind the goal. Another opportunity. The ball is going to stay inbound. Crossing the ball with a possible head. Now an opportunity. Goal! Sibia Mari Daniel for the 2 0. And again, Cersei is being aggressive early in this contest, and they are being rewarded for it. You know, they've had great spacing down there towards the goal for the first 10 minutes of this contest, and they've been rewarded with two goals. Another great setup there, a great pass to lead into a goal. Nice kick into the corner there, and the Lady Lions have an early 2 0 advantage right where they want to be with a little under 10 minutes gone in this contest. And uh, Lakeside is gonna try to find a way to uh, slow down number five, Gabby Ellens, because the attack is, it's happening on the left side and this with the speed that she has, they are gonna have to find a way to put an emergency brake on her. They will, and that, that's gonna be the, the problem for them to solve or to figure out as they go forward in this contest. I mean, Cersei has come out with a great game plan and they've executed it to perfection up to this point. Lay foul there. Center referee says no. Lily. I was saying that, that was Lily, but Cersei has it as number 25 on the jersey. Ashley Gill tried to deal from behind and now it's going to be a throw in for Cersei. On the jersey, that's number two, Grace Sledge. Chasing the ball, that's number eight. Looks like a substitution coming in for Cersei already. Number 18 looks like, also for Lakeside. Coming in is number 22. That'll be Abigail Thomas, the junior, coming in for the Lady Rams. Lakeside. Trying to find something going. When they woke up this morning, they didn't think about being down 2-0 in the first 10 minutes of the state finals. Chase. Well, this isn't definitely this is definitely not what you plan for when you're looking at the state championship game. No one wants to be down early, especially by two scores. But the Lady Rams are a team that have proven that in these situations they can get back into the match. And they'll look to do that right here because if they can keep this game close and bring it down to the wire, the Lady Rams have proven time and again this season that they can keep it close and play their best when the lights are the brightest and they can come up with those crucial scores in the closing seconds of a match. Throwing for Cersei, number 18. Will be in charge of it. Aubrey Arnold. No, I take that back. It's number 25 for Lakeside. Ashley Gale. Ashley with another throw in. Anticipating to the ball is Cersei. The player wasn't aware of the anticipation and now Lakeside Trying to get out of the defensive third. Cersei is going to try to penetrate in the right side. Ooh, lay foul. That can be a card. 
That was number one. Hagen Bryant. Got to be careful with those uh, fouls because, you know, especially when you're leading early in this match or early on the match, you don't want to leave your team with 10 players. Right. And at this point in the contest, you know, nerves are still up there mm -hmm. and it's easy to make mistakes early in the contest. Uh, you just want to try to calm those nerves and realize that, you know, you have the game in your control and just try to build off of that. And for better or for worse, really, today in this contest and in the previous contest, we haven't seen too many calls. The, the officials trying to let the teams play. So I definitely think that we can expect to see yet another physical contest here with two teams that, again, like to play some up-tempo soccer and like to play physical. I think the teams have done a, a tremendous job uh, spending the time playing the game, and that will allow the referees to do, you know, their jobs. In the first match, I think that that crew did a tremendous job. Uh, didn't have any complications as far as, you know, making controversial calls. And so far, the referee crew is doing a great job. They really have done a great job, and it, it's such a tough job to do here in the state championship game where one call can make the difference between winning and losing a contest. And with it, a state championship. So great job thus far by the officials. An opportunity for Lakeside, Lakeside, Lakeside. Oh, they foul, center referee say no, shot on goal. And two Challenge. And I cannot imagine if some of these girls, you know, who might be playing club and maybe going to to regional games or, or even to nationals, you know, how, how the high school season has prepared them to 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 excel at that high level competition. Right, and it's it's amazing just the like we said earlier we were talking about technology but also advances in training as well and just finding great ways to stay fresh throughout the season. Really, we're seeing some of these athletes really taking advantage of training resources, athletic training resources that we haven't seen before. So just a phenomenal group of athletes coming up with athletic talent that we really haven't seen before. Brian trying to take a shot there, but well done by Kylie Hermosillo blocking that shot. There was top of the 18 backs. And Cersei trying to get behind the defense, but number 17, Olivia Turning denies the opportunity she finds Moses and now it's Cersei with another opportunity to get something going in the final third but the ball goes away it's going to be a throw in for Lakeside with Ashley in charge of it not sure what happened on the last throw in Grace Sledge in charge of the throw in she brings the ball to Sarah Daniel. Sarah connecting there, top of the box, and have another opportunity. And this is the speed that I was telling you about by number five, Gabby Eddins. Eddins bringing the ball back, top of the box. And now it's the midfield, Sarah Daniel. Top an opportunity, shot on goal this time. The ball goes away. It's going to be a goal kick for Lakeside. And again, we were talking about it earlier. Cersei going to that left side of the field, trying to open up the rest of the field for a clean shot. Lakeside doing a great job to adjust there and stop them from having another clean look opportunity like they've had earlier in the contest. Irena Shayla for Cersei came in, took a break. First match. The second I thought I was gonna lose him, he was asking for substitution already at the end of the first game. Cersei on the go. It's oof, late, late, late foul there. Cersei Pia, number two. Grace Slade. Opening the field. Cersei on the left side. Number 13, Sarah Daniel wanted at the ball. Lakeside clears it. Emma Bailey doing a great job in the back so far, the defense for Cersei. We saw a nice clear there a few moments ago from Gale, giving her team a little bit of room to breathe as the ball goes again down to the other side of the field. 
the ball intended it to get to Abigail Tem Thomas for Lakeside, but the ball kind of went away. Now it's Cersei with Kate Daniel. Hagan Bryant. Switching the ball to Sarah, who finds some support on the left side. 18 minutes to play in the first half. Cersei leading 2-0. Scores by Chandler Meadows and Amari Daniel. Locker room goals. That's what those are called when they those are scored early, early in the match. I think Lakeside brought a lot of crowd today. They did, and Lakeside, great soccer program. Their fans travel very well, whether it's here or Fayetteville, as the state championships were held there in years past. And it also helps, you know, being this close, just being an hour, less than an hour, really, away from the Bentonville Athletic, or excuse me, the Benton Athletic Complex. A little push there. You're right, because a lot of the, uh, the week of champions have happened in the last few years at the University of Arkansas. Yes. In fact, that is where back in 2018, the Lakeside Rams men's team won their mm. first and only state championship in school history. In fact, now might be a good time to talk about Coach Mo for the Lakeside Lady Rams. Coach Mo, believe it or not, this is his sixth state championship game appearance overall. It's his first time in a girls state championship game, game appearance. He has led the boys' team to five appearances over the years with that one title win back in 2018. Uh, due to a staffing change, he has now had to take over as both the boys' and the girls' team's head coach. And he has done a phenomenal job leading both teams to state tournament runs this year and leading the Lady Rams all the way here to Benton. So a phenomenal job being done by Coach Mo. Corner kick for Lakeside. An opportunity to find a way to cut the distance. To find a way to put one. Good head right there. Player down. See the referee stops the clock. Sure enough, he's going to check on the player. That was a close 50-50 ball in the air, but now the referee is going to stop the clock and got the uh, trainer coming in. like there is a lot of rain going on also in northwest Arkansas as the game uh, resumes the clock must start running 15 minutes left in the first half So far, number 25, Ashley Gale, senior for Lakeside, has seen a lot of action here on the right side. That is attacking Cersei. And now Cersei in the attack with another speed, another opportunity for Cersei. Good job by number five, Amor Gale. And now Cersei has it. Cersei, Cersei! That's a great opportunity. Getting very physical there. Good job by number five, Amor Gale. Sophomore who, you know, has slowed down a little bit there at the last play. Right, and just phenomenal footwork there from Cersei, driving down the field, had an open look, but just missed it, trying to go for that right corner of the goal. Missed it a little bit to the right, but phenomenal execution up to that point, setting up the goal, just couldn't capitalize. 
Turner taking a break for Lakeside coming in into the game. That's number 16, Allison Erwin. Lakeside settling down now. But it's Cersei who, the speed that they have a front having a slow down just yet, just yet. Chase. Another opportunity this time. Sharon got in trouble. Crosses. Hits the bar. And now follow with the possession right there in the box. Look that it is a foul. Center referee says no. Another handball right there. 50 50. Shot on goal. And great save by the goalkeeper. Take it away, Chase. What a phenomenal save there from Taylor Bledsoe, the senior, coming up for her team in a big way there. We saw the near miss just a few moments ago, as I said, a the corner here, but there, another opportunity, a couple opportunities for the Lady Lions to pick up yet another goal to add on to their lead, but great job there by Bledsoe, saving what should have been, or would have most definitely been a goal. Great job there by the Lakeside goalie, keeping her team in it. Hagan Bryan coming back into the game. She's going to get the ball. Shot and goal to the far post. Go! Keeper couldn't do anything away. Jake, take it away, Chase. Well, you know what they say, the third time is the charm. The first time there for Cersei hits the top of the bar. The second time, it's a phenomenal save by Gale, but this time, perfect execution by the Lady Lions. Getting the goal in that back right corner. They already have a 3-0 advantage here with just under 13 minutes left in the first and, half. And what a smart move by the coaching staff. She... She comes in, and it's it's all about the tactics of the game. The coach recognizes this is an opportunity to do that set play. Well worked during, during the week. Set play, top of the box, and she bends that ball to the far post. It was just an amazing shot. Just phenomenal execution, phenomenal game plan. And we've seen that a couple times here today. We saw it in the Fayetteville game earlier on. Uh, coaches making a substitution, seeing a potential advantage in capitalizing on it giving their team or giving their team the lead in the case of the favor game or extending the lead in this case and here he comes a heck of Bryant again that was one of the players that first got my attention at the beginning of this match because the speed and the footwork and the way that she handles the ball she takes the one-on-ones and she shoots the ball really really well and, and, and because of that, she finds a way to put a beautiful goal. So we've seen uh, two beautiful goals this morning, you know, uh, with Fabil scoring a similar, just a goal like that, just on this side. Right, we've seen some phenomenal offense, really, in both of these contests. Right now, if you're Cersei, you're right where you want to be. They came out aggressive to start off this contest, and they've been rewarded for it. Picking up three quick goals here in the first half. The Lady Rams, I'm not sure if they've trailed and come back from a deficit this large yet this season, but they have been known to make comebacks. And no better place to do that than right here in Benton at the state championship, looking to do it again right here to claim their first state championship in school history for the ladies program. Another opportunity, another long shot this time. The goalkeeper makes a good save after the shot done by number four, Chandler Meadows. And now another shot this time, it goes away. And I think the challenge, and I don't know if the players have recognized, but I think Cersei has done it. The uh, Lakeside is giving in a lot, of, a lot of time and a lot of space at the top of the box, that they, Cersei's taking advantage of that space given and taking shots on goal. Right, and we've just seen, again, as you said, excellent capitalization on the spacing. 
and Cersei has really been aggressive to start off this contest. They're, they're not afraid to drive in and try to create early opportunities for themselves to score, and they've capitalized on three of those already here. Really keeping the ball on this side of the field as well. We really haven't seen the ball cross into their territory too much in this contest. Uh, they've done a great job of staying on their on their opponent's side of the field, trying to pick up more goals to add on to that lead. Lakeside only had a couple opportunities thus far in this contest for a goal. Haven't been able to capitalize quite yet, but they've had a, a couple of good setups. We'll see if they can get on the board here as we close out the first half, just under 10 minutes to go. Cersei getting a corner kick via number 13, uh, Sarah Daniel. Actually working on Daniel, doing a great job, but Cersei being too much already for Lakeside. 3-0 with eight minutes to play in the half. You can hear the fans from Cersei excited about what's happening right now. I'm sure Cersei's fans are very excited about the prospects of a first state championship since 2013. The squad, they've won four state titles in program history, but again, they haven't reached that pinnacle since that great 2013 season where not only did their girls team win the state championship, but their boys team won the state championship as well. So a great moment for them that year, and they'll look to recapture some of that magic here as they pursue a state title. Looks like trying to get something going against Cersei. Still plenty of time and plenty of soccer to play. Lakeside just has to find a way to get one in the net to, to give them that opportunity to stay in the game. And usually that first goal is the toughest one to get. Once the first one comes, the other one follows. And you got to avoid the fourth one too. Absolutely. The defense is of the essence in this contest as well. They're trying to get that offense. Corner kick. Not successful there. Goalkeeper is going to take care of that. Goalkeeper uh, Shelby Webb for Cersei. Not much of an action for her so far. Great saves by the goalie from Lakeside so far, though. Yes, Taylor Bledsoe has had a couple of great saves. Just a lot of opportunities for Cersei in the early parts of this contest. And Ultimately, you're not going to save them all. You're not going to get a save on every possession. That's been the case here. Bledsoe is having a great game. Has just been bombarded with a lot of opportunities. Great plays executed by the Lady Lions. On the go is Cersei. Top of the box. Crossing. Might be a handball there. Center referee says no. And it's going to be a throw in for Lakeside. Good effort by number 13, Sarah Daniel. And number one, Hagan Bryan on the last play. Ashley with the ball, cutting inside, crossing the ball with the right foot, trying to get to number 13, Taylor Ramirez. Ramirez couldn't get to the ball, and now Cersei on the left side. And again, that's the space that I've been, that I was telling you about, Chase. That you know, Cersei is going to be, a, is going to be taking advantage of it all day long. They are, and Lakeside, a slightly slower-paced team overall. They do have a more methodical approach. Um, they don't necessarily have the same speed that Cersei possesses. That really, that really is a special quality that the have, and they've been using it to their advantage here, using the speed and the spacing to create early opportunities to score, and they've capitalized. Cersei, via number 10, couldn't control the ball. That was Mary Daniel. I wonder if the Daniels are relating to each other on the Cersei team. You got Kate Daniel, Mary Daniel, and Sarah Daniel. Five minutes to play in the first half. Cersei leading 3-0. To Lakeside. The goals are scored by Chandler Meadows, top of the fourth minute. 
Then Mary Daniel came and scored the 2-0 four minutes later. And Brian Hagen with that tremendous goal, top of the 27th. And you were talking about it a moment ago. That's one of the great things about soccer. It really is a family game. It gives you a unique opportunity to play with family members. I was mentioning earlier the Gale family. They have a couple of members on the field here today, as well as Philip Gale, the older brother of Ashley Gale. Center referee stop the clock as number 10 for Lakeside came down and she's like I'm fine I'm good let's go let's keep playing I can play tough I can handle it bring it to me that's the body language message that she's sending number 19 I'm sorry Kylie Hermosillo she went down and she got up quickly enough she knows it's the state finals no regrets and that's exactly what you want to see out of your senior leadership in big games like these you don't want to go down without a fight and you want your senior leaders to be communicating that message not only to their teammates but to the other team as well and that we're not going down without a fight throwing for lakeside three minutes to play an opportunity for lakeside Cersei clears it away. Sending the ball back. This is where you gotta avoid the one-on-ones with no, no coverage because you cannot give that much of a space to Gabby Edens. She will make you pay, Chase. She will. She already has made the Lady Rams pay up a couple times early in this contest. Good job there. Lakeside the Lake with an opportunity right there. Number 16, Allison. Erwin couldn't finish that great play. It started right there in the middle of the field. Good job. Lakeside doing some quality of soccer and quality of play. Slight tackle right there. Good job. Looks like. Right knee hurting just a little bit there for Lakeside. Long ball, trying to get to Gabby Eddins. Actually does a good job protecting the ball. She's gonna bring it inside now again, two in a row, and the, and the crowd gets going. Lakeside loving it. That's what Lakeside needs to do. They need to find that way to get momentum to swing in their direction, get their fans fired up. Sometimes it's just one small thing, one small play that can get the tide going in your direction. And to go into halftime with momentum here for the Lady Rams would be crucial. If finding a way to get one in the net before the first half will be good for Lakeside. And remember, coming out of the locker rooms, you need to slow down Cersei because you don't want to have that full goal at the beginning of the second half. No, you don't. It's about finding that balance between offense and defense. You've got to not only get your... Um, Cross ball there, yeah. You just got to get your offense kick started, and while you're doing that, you've got to get your defense locked down. And really, Lakeside's done a pretty good job, other than those first 10 minutes of keeping Cersei. It's offense to a minimum. Thank you so much for all the hard work today going on here behind the cameras. Colton Strader on the camera, our producer Jonathan Webb. Mason Woodbright, Chase Harshall. Thank you for getting the job well done today. Getting close to the one minute mark as Cersei once more. Denied by the defense for Cersei. Late foul right there. Center referee says nothing. Let's keep playing. Cersei maintaining uh, possession of the ball for the last minute. They're going to bring it back to the middle of the field, finding some support. The ball comes back to Cersei. Driving it is number 19, uh, Kaylin Holyfield. Top of the box, an opportunity for Cersei. And 
Gavi Edens find himself another time to take a shot on goal. 21 seconds on the clock. Now a long shot, this time goal! Take it away, Chase. Again, just a phenomenal execution by the Cersei Lady Lions. It's another long shot. This one's from about 20 yards out. Actually, if you got the end zone, it's 30 yards out. She picked that one from about the 20-yard line. Just a phenomenal goal for the Cersei Lady Lions. And they've really, you know, we saw a couple of goals close to the goal early on, getting that one, getting those from inside the box, but really Cersei's been able to expand outside the box since those first 10 minutes and pick up some crucial goals to add to the We're going to take a short break and then we come back. We are recapping the first 40 minutes of the finals between Cersei and Lakeside. It's 4 0 and you're watching NFHS.
You can now watch the football, national baseball, and softball final. Say well, age 8 p.m. sports. Also, we watch today's broadcast on my Arkansas PDS. We'll support you as the oldest Arkansas Activities Association corporate sponsor. Wilson is the official ball sponsor of the Triple A. And Ortho, Arkansas is the official sports medicine trainer of the Arkansas Activities Association. Ortho, Arkansas provides sports medicine training needs for regional and state championship games in football and basketball. Image one is the official supplier of the Arkansas Fitness Association. Check out their logo feature at the Nuts Rule. You can purchase your official state championship here today during and after each game. Welcome back to the second half as the teams are making their way in and 
into the field. A uh, great 40 minutes with Cersei being more successful in the, in the first 40 minutes. They were, and it was just great execution all around. And in those first few minutes, it looked like it was just straight up tempo offense, but this Cersei team just has a pure element of speed that you don't see out of a lot of squads here in Arkansas. They've been using it to their advantage all game long up to this point to create opportunities and set up some really nice shots, and they've capitalized. They have a 4 nothing advantage as we get ready to start off the second half. I wonder if Lakeside has seen a tougher opponent than this one during the season. This is definitely one of their toughest matches, and uh, Cersei just a very talented squad. Just uh -huh. a very talented squad. Looks like Lakeside is gonna be we is gonna go with a 4-1, uh, two, 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 three formation, and the same referee has uh, checking with his assistant ARs, and he's checking on his uh, clock. And here we go. It's the beautiful game of soccer, and you can. Uh, Watch it live at NFHS Chase. Expectations from Lakeside for you on this second half. Well, just expect to see Lakeside come out fighting because Lakeside is a team that has been that has faced deficits before in the season as well as in this tournament. This is a team that's not going to go down without a fight. They find themselves uh, facing a pretty sizable deficit at this point in the contest, but I wouldn't be surprised to make to see them make this a competitive match before too long. And we we were talking about what Lakeside had to do before the end you know, of the first half and that was to find a way to cut the lead by scoring another game another goal and and, and keeping Cersei away from scoring scoring the fourth goal but Cersei find a way to do just that and, and and now is the challenge you know you got you got to find a way to keep Cersei at all cost away from the top of the box because they're going to take those shots especially with the space and time that they're giving them number 16 on the jersey with a throw in for Cersei Alisa Day the ball comes back to Alisa. Switching the ball to the middle of the field. Chandler Meadows on the last touch. The ball switches it to the right side in the attacking third for Cersei. Cersei once more crossing the ball into the box. Lakeside is going to clear it. And you're seeing the Lakeside defenders play out a little bit more in this half. We did see a couple of those long-distance goals, including one from 30 yards out to close out the first half. That one came with about 14 seconds left in the first half. Cersei has proven that they can get it done from both up close and far away. Lakeside bringing the ball to Ashley. Ashley has some support in the middle, and she's going to go with that. Cersei is going to take an advantage of that ball being given to them, and now they're going to, they're going to try to put Alexa in trouble. Might be a corner kick. Well, well done in the run by number five for Cersei. Gabby Evans. Good idea by Alexa on that attempt to pass the ball, but Gabby Evans was right there and stole the ball. So she's going to have to fight the wind, it looks like, on this corner kick. It, the wind blowing in in our direction towards the press box. Corner kick for Cersei. Ball comes to the far post, puts some head there. The goalkeeper catches it. It's a little foul there, but the referee says no. She was able to pick the ball up right away. And we've seen it today all day long, and we're still seeing it here now. The referees continuing to let the game play on. They're letting the teams play, even despite some contact between the two squads. Very physical contest up to this point. Make sight on the goal. It's going to be hard when you have three players attacking and eight defending. Lakeside is going to have to find a way to attack with at least six to eight players to 
be able to break into the defense. And the difficulty for Lakeside up to this point in the contest is figuring out that balance. How do you balance between the defenders and the attackers? For Lakeside, if they give up too many trying to attack, they leave themselves open on the defensive side of things, and we know that Cersei has the speed that they can capitalize on those opportunities. This new rule when the ball touches the referee, it's kind of hard to understand because sometimes, you know, the, the team that has possession of the ball is the team who's supposed to get the ball. It looks like the referee claims an indirect kick and gave possession to Cersei. Fifty-fifty 50 ball there, and it looks like there is a foul. This time is in favor of Alexa, and the fans get excited. We really haven't seen Lakeside get too many free kicks from this side of the field. We'll see if they can capitalize here. You know, how, mu how much do you risk when you're down 4-0? Uh, I noticed that uh, three of the players for Lakeside side are staying behind. Do you wanna, would you like to push those lines just a little back to get some support up front without, without, without in that having that fear of, of a possible counter-attack. Speaking of counter-attacks, here comes Cersei again with number five on the goal, Gabby Eddins. Eddins has it. She's going to try to cross a good job by the defense, and I believe that was... That was a great block. Cersei with the corner kick. Number five, Amoy Gale. It was the one who delayed the attack on that opportunity for Cersei. of uh, soccer to play. It's 4-0, Cersei leading up. The first goal scored by Chandler Meadows, top of the fourth minute. Mari Daniel, top of the eighth. And then the last two goals are scored by Hagen Bryant. It's a 4-0 lead by the Cersei Lady Lions. Managing the, the game well so far in the few minutes of the second half. This is what you got to do when you're leading 4-0. Maintain possession, force the opponent to make more mistakes. And then just uh, be smart when you have the ball. Yep, and we were talking about it just a few moments ago. When would Cersei, you know, take the break, or either team really take the foot off the gas pedal in this contest. We've seen Cersei take the foot off the gas pedal a little bit here. They do have a sizable advantage and looking to maintain that here, not looking to do anything too crazy. You do have the lead and you have a sizable lead. Just want to maintain that. Run out the clock and win yourself a state championship. You're up 4-0 and Cersei is 32 minutes away from getting it done. And we were also talking about it earlier about how Cersei, you know, how it relates to the other matchups Lakeside has seen this year. Today, Cersei, you're going to be hard-pressed to find a team that can combine both that fast tempo and the precision that we've seen from Cersei today. Not many teams in the 5A are going to be able to pull off a performance like that. Cersei's been able to do it here today on the biggest stage they've seen all season. Just a phenomenal match for the Cersei Lady Lions. Coming up at 2 p.m. is the 4A state finals between Harrison and Pulaski Academy. Another uh, interesting match. Harrison with a lot of history with Coach Chris doing a great job in Harrison. I had an opportunity to work with him in the 
early 2000. Chris has done a tremendous job both on the girls and on the boys' side. So that's going to be another interesting match. I haven't seen Pulaski Academy uh, play yet, so I'm, I'm, I'm curious about uh, that match as well. Yep, and Pulaski Academy is a program that really does have a lot of history. In fact, today, today's matchup that's coming up at 2 o'clock is really going to serve as a bit of a grudge match for bragging rights. Uh, Harrison and Pulaski Academy both have seven state titles to their name, looking for the most in the classification's history today. It's just been a two programs that have had phenomenal success over the years. Harrison's had a little more success in recent history. They won three of the last four titles, but the only team, the only other team in that span to win a state title is Pulaski Academy. They won their seventh back then in 2018. Free kick coming into top of the box. With Lakeside trying to Find a way to get one. Ashley Gale with the throwing for Lakeside. Connecting with Moses. Ball comes back and bounces off. Look like there is a player down and the assist the referee is gonna stop the clock. Player for, from Cersei. From here, uh, might be number 16. Number 16 for Cersei, Alisa Day. Number four coming in for Cersei. Chandler medals. Center referee has indicated to resume the game as the ball bounces off number 13, uh, Ramirez. Cersei with a throw in, Sarah Daniel trying to connect to Gavi Edens. Looks like there is a little foul there. And, and again, Hermorcillo doesn't agree with the referee, number 19. And she's going to be in disagreement with the, ref with the referee probably from the rest of the game since she didn't get that call when she went down and just got up and, and kept playing. Free kick. Lakeside. It's going to be a throw in for Lakeside and Amoy Gale is going to be in charge of the throw in. She was trying to connect with Ella DeLong. Twenty-eight minutes to play in the game. Cersei hoping that that clock run faster. And it always seems at this point in the match is when it's running its slowest, especially when you have the lead. And then when you're on Lakeside side of things, it seems like it's running as fast as it can. You know, for, for Lakeside, they're wanting the clock to feel like how it's feeling for Cersei right now. For Cersei, they want the clock to feel how, like how it is for Lakeside right now. Cersei doing a great job opening the field. Gabby Edens. Edens on the go. She has the speed. She has the momentum. She's going to cross the ball trying to set up an opportunity. Their goalkeeper comes and secure the ball. Good run by Gavi Eddins, the sophomore, 5'10". Didn't I say this earlier, but from the beginning of the game, she caught my attention, the way that she 
She plays the game and the speed. Good idea there by Lakeside trying to send that ball to number 22, Abigail Thomas. And when it comes to Edens, we talked about it. We've talked about it all game long. It's not necessarily that she's the one scoring all the goals, but she's using that left side of the field to set up goals, not only potentially for herself, but also her teammates. She's done a great job of capitalizing on the spacing that Lakeside has provided, and she's used that speed to her advantage, just like we're seeing right here. She takes the ball away. Gabby on the go. Another opportunity for Cersei. She's in the back. She's about to take a shot. Good job by the defense, number 39, their opportunity. For a second, I thought the center referee was going to call a PK on her. And you can hear the boo. And I'll see if I was Lakeside coach right now, I will be a little disappointed on the referee stopping the clock because I'm in a counter account. Now, for safety, I, I do agree because safety is first. But as a coach, you know, you. <laughs> You, you're denying that opportunity on the counterattack. Right, and at first it looked like she may have just been upset with the goal, but she she stayed down since then. So it looks like we may have an injury here. Mm -hmm. Definitely a disappointing moment when you have that kind of breakaway. Mm -hmm. But if this is something more serious, that's even more disappointing because you look at the game that Edens has had, she really has been the difference maker for her team. And that's not something you want to lose here with 26 minutes left in the state championship for nothing advantage or not. Correct. Number 13 for Cersei taking a break, Sarah Daniel. Twenty-six minutes to play in the game. That is the amount of time that Cersei has to become the state champs. Cersei fans cheering Eddins off the field. She has definitely come up for her team big time here in their biggest game of the year. And what about her performance? I mean, she's just a sophomore too. Remember on the rule a while ago? So a while ago, now the referee gives possession back to Lakeside, who had possession before the game, the, the, the game was stopped. Cersei on the go. Got an inside, might be a corner kick for Cersei. That was number 18, Aubrey Arnold. Corner kick for Cersei, 25 minutes to play in the game. Long ball coming to the far post, good head there. I don't think the direction is what she wanted it. Shot on goal there, goalkeeper not a problem with that shot. And that one fell right into the hands of Bledsoe as she boots it away from Lakeside. Lakeside, middle of the field, Cersei's gonna recover. Cersei trying to find a way to get one more. You 
you can start start seeing a little bit of frustration on Hermosillo on that last play, number 19. I think the the early two goals. I think what's it's what uh, got Lakeside. You know, not not being able to find a way to cut that lead before the third goal was scored. I think you're right, and it really, and it's not even just the goals themselves, but it's also having to try to adjust and try to fix the the mistakes that caused those goals. I think Lakeside was trying to fix those problems, and the thing is, they did but it also op offered up new opportunities for Cersei. You've just got to give credit to Cersei because even though, you know, Lakeside has changed their game plan and adapted to Cersei's strengths over the course of this match, ben or excuse me, Cersei has just found new ways to attack and to score. And it's that type of adaptability that makes teams so hard to beat. That's something that, you know, can really be the difference maker in a match, and it has been today. Throwing for Cersei. 22 minutes left in the game. Miscommunications there in the defense. That's what you want to avoid, too. You know, it's it's in, in moments like that because, you know, a little miscommunication can get you in trouble, in a deeper trouble. Right, and right now when you're, with your, when you're Cersei, you're trying just to run out the clock at this point. You don't want any big mistakes that could cause the momentum to shift because right now Cersei has kept the momentum in their favor for most of this contest, and they want to keep it that way as we enter the later minutes of this contest. One miscommunication can change an entire match, though. That's what Lakeside is looking for right now. They're looking for one of those miscommunications there from Cersei, and they need to capitalize on that miscommunication in order to turn the tide in their favor. Sarah Daniel working. Might be a corner kick for Sarah. Now the goalkeeper is going to have to do a goal kick. Looks like the ball went away on Cersei. And we've talked about Cersei's speed when it comes to offense, but how about how Cersei's de er, speed has helped them on the defensive side of the ball? Lakeside has really not been able to get the ball over to their side of the field for this contest because Cersei is so quick. And even when they have, you know, those where it seems like it's a one on one, all of a sudden a, a speedy Lady Lion catches up to him and is able to make a great play from behind. Cersei again on the go. Sarah Daniel on the last ball. Lakeside trying to get something going. Now chasing the ball is number 22, Abigail Thomas. It's going to be a throw in for Lakeside. Looks like number 11, Emiliana Kaiser. With the throw in. Cersei keeping the ball away. Gonna be a goal kick for Cersei. Good job by Jake Rose capturing those beautiful moments during the first and second match. Capturing the team pictures for both Bentonville West and Fayville High School, along with the MVP on the previous game. Ball in play, 20 minutes away for Cersei. Can Lakeside come back? Can Lakeside make history? Impossible is nothing, Chase. It definitely is not fully out of the question at this point. There are very few teams who in this situation are more qualified to make a comeback here than Lakeside. Lakeside has played the role of the comeback kids all season long. They've done a great job in the late minutes of contest, getting back into it, and sometimes, and most times actually, securing the victory. So the Lady Rams, 
are still within striking distance. Time is running out, though. It is of the essence here. They need to get something going quickly so they don't run out of time, and they have the time left to make something happen after that momentum shift does go in their favor. Goal kick for Lakeside. Cersei on the go. Trying to get one more to seal the deal. The ball hits the football crossbar. It's going to be a goal kick for Lakeside. Cersei. Now Cersei is staying in the final third, keeping Lakeside in the in their defensive third. And we talked about it all first half about how how quick the goals were coming for Cersei, and now we find ourselves mired in probably the longest scoring drought of this contest. Ten and five coming back in for Cersei. Mari Daniel and Gabby Eddins coming back into the field. Lakeside on the go. Trying to connect with number 22 there, but Cersei, it's successful in getting the ball back and now it's a 4v3 situation an opportunity for Cersei gonna cut inside now still alive setting it in the backs good save by the goalkeeper and that's your play right there because if that ball couldn't be black it could be over for Lakeside right and Bledsoe has done a great job of keeping Lakeside in this match. There have been many close calls in this contest. You know, we look at the four goals, and, you know, normally that's all we see, but Bledsoe has really kept the Rams in this match. She's done a great job. She may not have saved all of them. There were some great plays by Cersei that they capitalized on and got the score, but she saved most of them in this contest, and I think that's the important thing to remember here as we move into the later minutes of this state championship game. Sixteen minutes away for Sarsu to Take that trophy home. Lakeside. Miscommunication right there. Long shot. Can she get it on goal? Goalkeeper. Catching the ball with no problem. For a second, I thought she was going to take a good shot into the goal. It didn't. Maybe trying to set up a play inside there, but didn't have any teammates in there. And it may have just been sometimes when you're trying to make kicks like that, sometimes you just miss it by just a hair. And that can cause a little bit of a misfire. Still the right idea there, though, for the Lady Rams. Goalkeeper playing the ball back. Making it a little hard to Turner, who couldn't control that ball as the ball was traveling. Lakeside. Getting the ball back. Cersei not putting that much of a pressure. They know that with 14 minutes, they're going to pretty much let Lakeside be the one who pick up the pace of the game. Yep, and Lakeside naturally is not as quick of a team as Cersei, so they're going to be a little bit more methodical trying to get their goals they're still sticking to that approach, seeing a little bit more up-tempo in this half, but it's just been phenomenal defense by Cersei. 
all match long. Haven't provided too many opportunities for the Lady Rams to capitalize on. And even then, in those few opportunities, the defense has been good enough to cause either some miscommunications or misfires, as well as a few great saves. A little disagreement there between number 18, Makina, right in the center referee. Was a little foul there, and I think the referee says, no, get up and play. Lakeside with an opportunity chasing the ball. That's number 22, an opportunity for Lakeside. Lakeside, Abigail Thomas. That was a good run by Thomas. It was, and just unfortunately for her, that that speedy Cersei defense catching up to her on that one. She was making a great drive towards the goal, but Cersei forcing the ball out of bounds, and it'll have to be a throw for Lakeside. Hermosillo. Throwing for Lakeside. Good job by Lakeside. She needs some help, though. Help wasn't there. And now Cersei on the go. It's a 2v2 situation. Cersei's going to send the ball deep. Good job by the defense now that she's in offside position. Surprised the assistant referee didn't call, didn't flag it up. Yep, now they're going to do it. I think it's an offside. Hmm. Okay. Ball in the box. Cersei top of the box, number 19 on the last touch. Can Cersei cross the ball in the box? And we've seen some great defense here from Annalise McAllister down there toward the box as this contest comes to a close. Lady Rams down by quite a bit here with about 12 minutes to go, but they are not going down without a fight, and that's something you have to respect here in the state championship game. Lots of fans coming in for the next game. As Harrison, it's coming into town. I used to live in the Green Forest area, Berryville. And that's how I uh, got to work with Chris. My daughter went to Green Forest High School. Played volleyball there. And speaking of Green Forest, they are in the finals tomorrow, both the boys and the girls. Perfect weather so far. It is. The the overcast sky has really been our friend to this point. Haven't had any rain yet, but it has blocked out the sun a little bit, which has provided this nice weather that we've had all day long for these contests. Cersei on the go. Another opportunity. Cersei, goal. Goal. Goal, 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 for the 5-0 chase taken away again phenomenal execution by the Cersei Lady Lions I feel like I'm a broken record at this point talking about how great their execution has been in this match but it's rung true all game long the Cersei Lady Lions picking up another great goal there off of the assist from Edens her presence you know she left the game a few minutes ago but she made her presence felt upon her return helping set up that goal for Cersei and now it looks like they have this state championship game just about locked away. And now it's a matter of, you know, when you're down this, this many, uh, do you get, do you bring all your seniors in or some of those seniors that are uh, still on the bench and not having, uh, uh, getting some playing time, uh, do you bring some of the new kids just to have some experience what a state championship is all about? You know, it's, it's, as a coach, it's hard, it's hard to balance in a game like this. 
you're absolutely right. And really for Lakeside, they're in the interesting situation where a lot of their senior class starts in these matches. They have a lot of older talent and these Lady Rams have been working a long time to get to this moment. I believe, in fact, that this might be the Lakeside Lady Rams' first appearance in a state championship game, even if they don't come away with the victory here today. They can walk out of here with their heads held high, knowing they did something really that no other team in program history has ever done. Sorcy. No, a shot on goal, and this time the goal goes away. It's going to be a goal kick for Lakeside. Coming up next is the third game of the day. 4A girls Harrison facing Pulaski Academy. That game is scheduled for 2 p.m. It's going to come up right after this one gonna be an interesting match I'm not sure how much history this teams has the last time that I face or watch Pulaski Academy I was coaching Rogers High School back in the early 2000s but Pulaski Academy always finding ways to get their teams into the State championships. Cersei. Crossing that ball. Lakeside. Moses. Little pushing going on there. It's going to be a throw in. It's going to be a Lakeside throw in. Number 14. Trophy presentation might be coming up. Here in seven minutes. And another thing that I've really appreciated about this contest and the other two contests is these have both been very physical matches, but you've never really seen the teams get too chippy with one another. Nah, uh. You've seen great sportsmanship on both sides, whether that team is winning or losing. It's just been it's been great sportsmanship. It's exactly what you want to see out of the game here in on the biggest stage of them all when it comes to high school stalker here in Benton. Another opportunity for Cersei. That was number 10 on, with a shot on goal. You're right. You know, it's it's that's one of the things that you know when when you coach at the youth level, you gotta teach those fundamentals. You got you gotta teach the kids to play the game uh, clean and hard. You know, one time I was I was in this situation where it, it was like the game was getting very physical, and uh, and the referee unfortunately wasn't calling wasn't calling the game, so there were fouls that they were not called. And you know, I told the kids, hey, let's keep the just keeping the ball, the ball going, play the game, play safe, and if for some reason the referee, the referee doesn't call, you keep playing. But you know the perception from another, uh, another coach was like that I, that I was encouraging my players to play physical. I said no, I say keep playing until the whistle. And if the opponent is getting physical, you're gonna have to get physical. But again, physical without hurting anybody. Right, and that's what the teams have done a great mm -hmm. job of here today. And again, when you're in a game like this where a state championship is on the line, history is on the line for a lot of these programs, you know, tensions are going to be running high, emotions are going to be running high during these games, but the teams have done a great job of keeping themselves in check, you know, regardless of the outcome. Both teams in both matchups have shown great sportsmanship up to this point, even though the scoreboard you know, at times has gotten a little lopsided in both contests. Neither team got really chippy. Both teams played hard. They played till the final whistle, and you've got to respect that. Cersei about five minutes away from uh, winning the state title. Congratulations to both teams who, you know, made it this far, to the parents who, through the season, support their, their daughters. Uh, to play the beautiful game of soccer. Uh, to all the volunteers that get involved not only in the week of champions, but in uh, the whole season. And here is the sixth goal of the afternoon. And this time, Cersei is putting it away. And that's a great job done by 
number 18 to score the six goal. That's Avery Arno. In Cersei, once again, they've done what they've done all contests long. They have, you know, used the spacing to their advantage. And I don't think we've talked about it as much, but it's also very important, the ball movement around this team. They've, they haven't been selfish with the ball. They've really done a great job of finding the open person to make the shot, and they have capitalized on a lot of those opportunities here today, the most recent of which just happened a few moments ago and gives them a 6 nothing advantage here with just over five minutes left in the second half. And I don't know if the referee is trying to reset the clock to five minutes or something. Uh, it's 5-0 or 6-0. I'm not sure if cutting or adding any seconds is going to make a difference in the game. I'm not sure either. You just want to be careful about that. And it actually looks like we've had time reduced. Oh, time reduced. So is that a, is that a rule in the finals? I'm not completely sure, to be honest with you. But it looks like we're going to go ahead. We fast forward it a little bit in this matchup. We're now down to two and a half minutes left in this contest. Okay. All right. But again, congratulations to uh, uh, Lakeside for making it to the finals. Congratulations to Cersei. Well deserved. From the beginning of the game, they came and handled business the way that they wanted. My question comes, Chase. Who's going to be the MVP of the game? And I'm going to have to say that it's, it has to be Gabby Eddins. That's what I would say, too, is that even though she has not been the one to score all the goals for her team today, she's been the one that set up so many of those opportunities. She really is the definition of a team player because she has set up those opportunities, not just for herself, but for her teammates. She's gone out there. She played the game as hard as she could. And now she's about to reap the rewards with her teammates with a state championship, the first one in in the program's history since 2013. And coming up next, it will be the 2 p.m. game for the 4-8 state championship between Harrison and Pulaski Academy as Cersei is wrapping things up. About a minute, uh, over a minute left to uh, claim themselves as the state championship, state champions. You can see again in the background over there behind the referees, the trophy presentation just uh, getting ready to get it going. And what a moment this is going to be for the Lady Lions and their fans. They've been waiting a long time for state championship number five, and it looks like it's finally coming home to Cersei here as the clock winds down on this matchup. And parents, parents are excited. Uh, you know, with 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 the COVID nineteen and everything that then the situation had a had a show was how to adjust. I'm just so happy that that you know we we get to we get to play sports as a whole, and 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 now you know it's it's we we might we might start getting a feeling of going back to normal to normal things. You can hear the counting of the clock going down as reporters and photographers are walking into the field to capture that moment and the bench running into congratulations and just had a ride there with the rest of the team and joining. It's, it's, it's a great feeling, Chase. It is, and I mean... You've got to feel great after performance like that. They played just about as well as you could have hoped in this state championship game. Six to nothing is not an easy feat in any match over the course of the season, much less the state championship game with a state title on the line. The Cersei Lady Lions performing when the lights were brightest, and they had a phenomenal match here today, closing out a dream season with a state championship their first one since 2013. Coach uh, heading into the huddle there with the girls, Larry Stamps, the head coach for Cersei, Bart McFarland there, the training there. They're all happy and it's all celebration and the presentation for the running up trophy about to happen, Chase. Take it away. And what a moment this is for the Lakeside 
fan base. This is something that they've waited for for a long time. This is something that these girls have really fought hard for. Even though they didn't come away with the victory today, still a very impressive season for the Lakeside Lady Rams, the best in their program's history, making it all the way to Benton. You can see the faces of, of the players and some sad, but like you say, Chase, you know, it's still a runner-up. It's a good feeling. Not that many, not that many teams can be runner-ups. You're right, and again, any team that has made it this far in the season has earned their way here, and that in itself is an achievement. Both of these teams fought very hard to get to this very moment. And now the presentation for the for the champion, Cersei. The trophy presentation is going to be, and the girls are going to come and grab that trophy, and the celebration begin. They're raising that trophy up. They have that banner chase, and again, what a great feeling. It is a great feeling. It doesn't get much better than this when you're a soccer fan, especially when your team is hoisting that AAA state championship trophy. This is a moment that the Cersei Lady Lions have been waiting for a long time. It's been eight years since their last state title. They've been waiting for that last state ring to complete the hand. That's five state championships for Cersei. What a moment for their squad, their program, and for their town. And with that, we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, it's going to be the 2 p.m. game with the 4-8 four, four, girls division between Harrison and Pulaski Academy. You're watching NFHS. <laughs> 